Welcome to a DIY mini album tutorial. I'm Shari Philomohala here at the Graphic 45 office and I cannot wait to show you how to create this Christmas album. So we are just gonna be taking some of these chipboard sheets and turning it into this dimensional and fun mini album. Of course, it looks gorgeous done up in our Christmas time collection, which we'll be using and you'll be getting in the club kits but I think that this album would look great uh, done up in any paper collection. So I hope you enjoy learning how to create it and learning how to create your own uh, fun little binding mechanism as well. So this month, the project has been created for us by the fabulous Maria Cole. Along with this album, she's also created these really fun uh, DIY gift card holders that are a great because they use up just our leftover papers from the album. So uh, nothing's going to waste. But to dive into this album to show you uh, really how fun and festive it is, um, I want you to come in closer and see all these gorgeous um, fussy cuts that we'll be doing, uh, showing you how to maximize your Graphic 45 papers. And then once you open this up, you'll see there's a lot of fun pockets and a dimension going on in the inside. So we'll be creating, um, just using some of those ephemera cards just as is, keeps it nice and simple. Then we'll be matting a few of them on some of our chipboard sheets, um, giving you some really nice heavy duty uh, photo mats for you to use there. We'll also be creating this fun belly band page over here where you can slide in um, more of those cut apart papers or photos and other Christmas mementos. And then we've got another style of pocket page over here where you can see got some fun tis the season cut aparts that are gonna slide right in there. But I love that this is open so you can add even more of your Christmas photos in here as well. And then on this side, we've got a fun flip top pocket page. Sorry, it's not a pocket page. Another fun flip top page. Um, however, when we glue this down, we can always turn it into a pocket as well. So always thinking ahead and then folding it open. You can see there's some gorgeous pockets with more photo mats and ephemera cards in there. So there's really gonna be a lot of opportunities to personalize these albums. And then it's all just gonna kind of repeat itself from here. So we've got another one of those gorgeous full size pocket pages, another flip top page over here, our fun belly band page. And on the cover or the back cover, we've got another great uh, pocket storing some more photo mats. So you can see that Maria's design really maximizes how much fun you can have with our Christmas time papers. So uh, we hope that you hop on over to our website, Club G45, to pick up our volume 10 club kit. Um, so you can pick up, and not so you can pick it up, but in your volume 10 kit, you'll be getting this uh, Christmas time collection pack, uh, 12 by 12 sheets. You get 16 of those and they're double sided along with two uh, nice cardstock sticker sheets. You'll also be getting the Christmas time ephemera cards. You get 32 uh, pieces in there. The Christmas time chipboard and our fun uh, Graphic 45 clock keys that have a nice fun steampunk feel that goes perfectly with this collection. And then of course the black chipboard sheets um, and in our chipboard sheet pack you get 10 um, nice medium weight chipboard sheets. So go ahead and grab your supplies and let's start creating this super fun DIY album. Step one, we're gonna take one of our 12 by 12 black chipboard sheets and we are gonna cut it into two pieces that are gonna be six inches by nine inches. And um, to do that, I use our, fix, our Fiskars rotary trimmer that you see here. Um, you can also use an X-Acto knife with a ruler or um, whatever heavy duty paper trimmer you have at home. Step two, grab two more sheets of black 
uh, chipboard and we're going to cut these down to be five and three quarters by nine inches so you'll end up with four of those total step three we're going to take out a fourth sheet of black chipboard and we're going to cut uh, one piece to be one and three quarters by nine inches two pieces to be one and a half by nine inches and one piece that's five inches by eight inches Step four, take out a fifth and sixth sheet of the black chipboard, and we're gonna cut out uh, six total pieces that are gonna be four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Step five, we're gonna grab a piece of cardstock. I'm using black for this. Um, this doesn't come in your kit, so you could use whatever coordinating color you have. Um, black would be ideal. And you're gonna cut this to be 12 inches by nine inches. Step six, we're gonna take another sheet of black cardstock and we're gonna cut out four pieces that are gonna be three and a quarter by nine inches and one piece that's gonna be two and a half by nine inches. And then we're gonna put these into our scoreboard and then we'll score at a quarter of an inch. And then my first go around when I did that, because it's such a thin piece, it started to uh, curve outwards, making my score line not as straight as I needed it to be. So now I'm just kind of being more mindful, making sure that my paper is staying where it needs to all the way to the bottom. So again, do that with all four pieces. Step seven, we're gonna find our Believe in Magic paper and we're gonna cut out two pieces that are gonna be six inches by 12 inches. And then take out your scoreboard and we are gonna score these um, three inches from the bottom. So you can see this is right side up. So put it, the bottom at our zero and then score at three inches. And do that with both. Now that we've scored those, we can go ahead and crease on our score marks just using the flat side of the bone folder. Give it a nice even fold. And then taking some liquid adhesive, we are going to create our little pockets. So I'm just adding a thin line of adhesive to both the left and right hand side. And now I have a uh, pocket created here. Step eight, we found our Making Spirits Bright. And we're gonna cut out two pieces that are gonna be five and three quarters by 12 inches. And then we are gonna repeat those steps we just did with uh, these fun little pockets. So from the bottom of this sheet i am going to score at three inches do the same with both of those and then take your bone folder and crease on those score lines and then with your liquid adhesive again Just put adhesive on both the left and right and right hand side, forming our pocket. And do the same with both. With the B side of Christmas time, we're gonna cut out two pieces that are gonna be five and three quarters by nine inches. Step 10, we're taking Holly and Ivy and cutting this to be, uh, or cutting two of them to be five and three quarters by nine inches. And then step 11, we're taking Jingle all the way and we're cutting uh, two of those to also be five and three quarters by nine inches. From Trim the Tree, we're gonna cut out two pieces that are gonna be five and three quarters by eight and three quarters. And one piece that's gonna be five and, oh, sorry, <laughs> one piece that's gonna be one and five eighths by eight and three quarters. Step 13, we're taking Believe in Magic and we're gonna cut out two pieces that are gonna be four and three quarters by nine inches. 
And then you're gonna take a ruler and a pencil or some kind of marking device. And we're going to mark from the bottom that we want to use our circle punch at uh, one and three quarters from the bottom. So mark there and then also from the top. Mark at uh, one and three quarters. Perfect, and I'm just gonna do it with one because I'm going to stack these up and um, cut into them with my circle punch at the same time. So what we're gonna need is a, a one inch circle punch. Uh, if you have something slightly bigger or slightly smaller, it'll all work um, just the same. Or uh, you could always trace something that you've got in your stash as well. Um, that's a similar size. So like maybe you've got a jar or a bottle of uh, glitter or what you have, and then you could just uh, do a half circle trace and then cut that out. So I'm going to take my half circle punch and I'm just going to be cutting that Hold on, let me check. Is this gonna be, do we punch? Okay. So we don't want our notches to be in the center of our circle punch. We want that to be the top or bottom edge. So since I'm going from the top, I want this notch to be the top edge of my punch and halfway through. So like so, and then I'll do the same with the bottom. So I have my mark here and just going to line it up with the bottom of my circle punch here and halfway through and then punch that out. And there you have it. We've got two cute little notches that are gonna be great for uh, pulling things in and out of our pocket. Step 14, we're taking another sheet of holly and ivy and we're cutting this to be two pieces that are gonna be four inches by 12 inches. And then we're gonna score these on the 12 inch side, right at six inches, right in half. And then take those and fold them in half. And then we're gonna take out two of those black chipboard rectangles we cut earlier that are um, four and a quarter by six and a quarter and we'll adhere these right on top just like so. So when you open it up, the green will be on the inside. I'm just using a liquid adhesive, but of course, if you like score tape or whatever your adhesive jam might be, you can go ahead and follow your heart. And then when centering this, I like to make sure that my corners are looking nice and even. And then just slide it into place. Step 15, we're taking a second sheet of Making Spirits Bright, and we're cutting this to be four and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And then we're gonna take that black chipboard piece we already cut to be five by eight inches. And we'll just adhere this right in the center of that. Step 16, with our second sheet of Trim the Tree, we're gonna cut two pieces to be one and a quarter by nine inches. And then we are going to center these over our chipboard pieces that are one and a half by nine. So they will be flush with the top and bottom of the chipboard and then we'll just center from left and right. Step 17 from North Pole, we're gonna cut out this cute little Christmas time Santa stamp 
And if you have some scallop scissors in your uh, stash, you can go ahead and use those, or you can keep it simple and just uh, cut it with regular scissors. And then we're going to cut out our uh, Santa holding our bag, the Peace, Love, and Joy cut apart, and then these border pieces. Um, we're going to cut out the red border and then also the green one. And we want these, um, we want two of them that are each going to be five by three quarters for both. And then from a second sheet of Jingle All The Way, we're going to cut out this cute little car image. And then we'll save uh, the leftover paper for our gift card holder project. Step 19, we're taking this Christmas time uh, signature sheet and we're going to do some fussy cutting uh, with this fun, busy paper. So we're going to take out this Christmas time um, big gear image here. And then we'll take our um, Santa with the top hat and this train. And now that I have them loosely cut out, I can go ahead and start fussy cutting. And um, note when I said train, we also want to make sure that we're including the ball, drum, and this holly. And we're going to fussy cut this all out as one image. So that is a lot, a lot of fun to be fussy cutting all together but it's gonna make for a really great front cover embellishment. And you know, we always love to do a little bit of fussy cutting with our projects just to kind of showcase how easy it is to add dimension to your projects using some of Graphic 45's um, busier papers. You know, our signature sheet always sets the tone for the collection so it'll always feature all the colors in the collection and um, give you tell the story of what the collection is all about you know um, my mom diane schultz who is the owner of graphic 45 and the head designer she is all about storytelling when coming up with our collections so whenever we have um, an idea for a collection or we get a wonderful request from our uh, G45ers. We always try to do a lot of research to tell a full story, just making it even easier to use up those papers. And then of course, making sure that the color palette is all complementary and flows together, which I love because it means that you can't create a project that doesn't match. So no matter what you do, even if you if you make a mistake and you glue the wrong thing down or you run out of one piece of paper, you could always use uh, whatever you have left over to make it work and it's still gonna look great because everything goes together so seamlessly. Another fun tidbit about our paper collections is that if you notice if you're a graphic designer out there um, pages like our signature page that we're currently cutting have um, layers on top of layers and layers in them so some of these files when they're being created and collaged together can have upwards to you know more than 200 different layers on a single piece of paper just which is one of the fun things about graphic 45 that we put a lot of labor and love into every single paper collection and it makes it hard to replicate because not a lot of other people want to spend all that time when creating a piece of paper. But we know our G45 ers appreciate it and love all the details and all the projects that we see on our social media on Instagram and Facebook really showcase like all you know showcase all the details of not only our papers but you can see that the G45ers who use our products um, love to pay attention to detail as well and create just the most stunning uh, works of art I have ever seen which is always such a great part about getting out our collections and getting them into your hands. But anyway, so I'm fussy cutting. And like we did in that first step of fussy cutting where we loosely cut around uh, the images we were gonna cut, 
that always helps so you're not fumbling with a 12 by 12 sheet of paper it's a lot easier to manage this little this little bit rather than that and then you can get in the details and it makes it a lot more fun and less stressful another tip when fussy cutting is to uh, use your finest tip scissors and then also to kind of let your scissors don't need to move a whole lot and you just kind of drive the paper through the blade of the scissor And if you love fussy cutting, you can always take all those extra scraps you've got left over after creating a project and cut out more embellishments and then add extra dimension and detail. There's a lot of room inside this album that we're gonna be creating between the pages. So if you wanna build it up and add more dimension, it's definitely a great project to do that with. Step 20, we are taking our two uh, pieces of chipboard that are six by nine inches, and we're going to write a back cover on one and front cover on the other. And then we're gonna take two pieces of coordinating ribbon, uh, whatever you've got in your stash. And uh, we want uh, each piece to be uh, 12 inches long. And we are going to adhere one on the back, the piece that we wrote back cover on in the center. Left hand side and then on the front cover, we'll be of the center right. Step 21, we're gonna grab that chipboard that's one and three quarters by nine inches, and then we're gonna make four little dots at the bottom that are equally spaced apart. So they're roughly about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch apart, um, which I put my piece in between my ruler and just centered it in between uh, two inches, and then roughly marked about a quarter of an inch in, and then roughly marked about a quarter of an inch apart from each of those. Um, it's, it's kind of hard to see on mine. So if you check out the project sheet um, on Maria's example, she had a nice white pen where it's easier to see. Step 22, we're grabbing our 12 by nine inch black cardstock paper that we cut. And mine does have a texture on one side and smooth on the other. So I have my smooth side down and my texture side up. So I want my smooth side to be um, on the outside of my album. And then I'm going to take our front cover chipboard piece with the ribbon uh, facing down so it's not exposed here. And this is just going to adhere just flush with the top, bottom and left hand side of our cardstock. And then go ahead and burnish that down. And then I have just um, a scrap piece from the chipboard that's one eighth of an inch. So you can eyeball it or you can make yourself a little template like I have here. And then we are going to adhere down um, our spine piece that we have our markings on. So we want our markings to be um, facing up when we adhere this down. And we want to leave these two pieces an eighth of an inch apart. So that's where this little strip comes in handy. So you know that you've got 
a nice consistent uh, spacing. And so once you've got your space, just go ahead and adhere that down right next to that front cover, just leaving that eighth of an inch gap between the two pieces. And another tip uh, when you're adhering down covers, if you're using um, a liquid adhesive or if you're using a score tape, you do want to make sure that you are getting a lot of, um, you're getting a lot, you're getting a really good bond with your paper and your chipboard pieces. So you just want to make sure that you're using um, enough, uh, plenty of adhesive. So I've got it adhered down and now I can pull up my little one eighth of an inch template piece and just burnish that with a bone folder. And now we are going to do our back cover piece. So you can see that this isn't quite enough um, cardstock to cover the whole thing, but not to worry. That's why we cut our uh, piece earlier. That's a uh, two and a half by nine inches. So put that aside for now and use our template again. And then this will adhere onto that cardstock. But since uh, we don't have, it's not um, fitting fully um, and we don't want adhesive to get on the table, I'm gonna be putting adhesive on directly onto my cardstock rather than the chipboard piece. So. I have my template there just so I kind of know not to add adhesive over there. All right, now make sure our ribbon is facing down. And now that we have a good placement, I can pull up my chipboard piece. So I've just flipped it over and making sure we're getting out any of those air pockets. Everything is looking good. And now we can take um, that two and a half inch piece and we'll just adhere it down overlapping over our black cardstock. If this is your first time making a DIY album, I'm excited for you. There are a lot of fun once you start and the ideas are endless where you can kind of mix and match other techniques we've done in other tutorials and add into this one and just really personalize it and make it your own. But of course, sometimes when I'm doing a project, I just want it to start doing the fun part and just start decorating. So it's nice that we also have our tag and pocket albums for just when you want to start having, getting creative without having to build up the album yourself. I guess I was a little over eager with that adhesive. <laughs> so just wiping it off with a damp tape, taper, paper towel, paper towel will do the trick. And we'll be also covering this with some decorative papers too. So not to worry. Now, before I start adhering down our beautiful graphic 45 papers, I'm just going to kind of play with this, making sure everything is going to fold correctly. So you can see we've got our album cover created already. It's looking good and making sure I don't have any air bubbles and that I'm not tearing at my spine and I'm nice and covered. But if you do start to get any tearage at your spine or you do want to make sure um, to be extra covered, you could always take, um, you can always take an extra piece of cardstock like we did here and put it over the spine to kind of double up if you, if you want. But when you're um, doing that, you always want to make sure that you're getting out any air pockets. There's a lot of adhesive coverage and that you're slowly taking those turns uh, the first few times that you are folding your album. 
to strengthen spines, you can also uh, use some washi tape or um, book binding fabrics or other fabrics too. Um, just when you're trying to try out new techniques and make it your own, um, those are just some other fun ideas. Step 23, while our album cover is still um, outside facing up, not um, the inside where it's the exposed chipboard. So we've got the cardstock facing up. We're gonna go ahead and uh, adhere our trim the trees papers down. And we just wanna center each of those on its own panel. So we're just using um, whatever adhesive you like, center all three pieces. All right, so for step 25, we've located our four uh, chipboard pieces that are five and three quarters by nine inches. And then we're taking our uh, scored cardstock pieces and we're going to add adhesive onto um, the half inch piece, leaving the quarter inch uh, fold on the left hand side. So we'll add our adhesive onto onto our scored cardstock. And then we're going to adhere it onto the left-hand side of our chipboard sheet. Make sure it's nice and flush with the left-hand side. And then I'll wipe off any excess that you have. So now we have uh, a little ledge onto our chipboard sheet. And then you'll do the same with the other three. So you've got our little lip going up here and then our half inch cardstock onto our chipboard on the left hand side flush. So now we're going to adhere our pages on the inside. So for step 26, we're gonna take our cover and flip it over. And then taking those chipboard sheets, we are gonna start to line those up with our marks that we made on the bottom of our page. So we'll adhere that fourth of an inch spine down. And then once you like your placement, go ahead and adhere that to the spine. And then we'll do the same with all of our pages. All right, so now we have four pages added into our DIY album. So at this point, um, we are gonna be doing lots of fun decorating where we've already kind of got our pages and everything put together. But if you are just following along um, or you wanna create a second one, this would be a great time for you to cut up uh, whatever papers you'd like and add them in here. So for each of your pages, I would suggest uh, creating some more of these little strips. Uh, this one is a half an inch by nine inches, and then I scored it at a quarter of an inch. Um, this way we can put one on the back as well as uh, how there is one on the front. That way it's just gonna be uh, more stable and um, make sure that your pages, like these ones that I have score taped down, aren't gonna pull up. So it is definitely ideal to do this before you are adhering your papers down. So just kind of want to do it with some liquid adhesive and then using your bone folder to make sure you're getting a really good connection with uh, your chipboard pages and your spine. I'm just using a damp paper towel to soak up any excess. And then of course we want to make sure that it's going to work. So whenever you're doing a mechanism that is movable, you do want to play around with it, making sure that it's functioning properly. Um, this after opening and closing it a few times, I feel like I can get a stronger bond kind of in the crease of my page. So 
Now we are good to go and start decorating. So now we get to do the fun part of decorating our album. So we have the It's Christmas Time paper that we created, that little fun pocket at the bottom. This is gonna go on the inside of our front cover. And it's gonna be nice and flush with the left top and bottom. Now I really love when you're burnishing your pages down and you can hear all those little air bubbles popping. That's such a satisfying sound to me. And then we're going to adhere our merry and bright border to the top of our pocket. And then from your chipboard pack, we're gonna take out this fun uh, rectangle piece. And I'm just gonna file off those little chipboard nubbins. And of course, if you want to um, be adding adhesive, or not adhesive, if you wanna be inking up your edges as you go along, uh, that's always encouraged. I like to keep it simple in my tutorial and I'll leave that part out. But um, in our designer samples, uh, they usually ink theirs so you can kind of see uh, the difference. So it's kind of, you know, just your own personal preference if you wanna take that extra step. And this is going to adhere onto our pocket, just right in the center. And then we're just taking some ephemera cards as well as um, that four and a quarter by six and a quarter chipboard, one of those that we took out. And then we'll just be matting this tis the season on here. And I'm gonna leave it with the journaling side up. However, if you like the uh, Christmas tree side up, go ahead and adhere it that way. And before we start stuffing our pockets, I'm gonna take these cute little banner stickers one red and one of the checkered. And I'm going to layer these up at the top, just giving our page some extra shine and detail. And then just overlapping just a bit, just like so. And then taking our sand with the top hat and our nice um, matted photo mat, those are gonna slide into our pocket. Step 28, we're gonna start working on page one of our album. So I'm taking our jingle all the way paper that we cut earlier, that's five and three quarters by nine inches. And this is going to adhere onto our page one. And it's just gonna be flush with the right hand side and the top and bottom. And then taking our plaid piece that we uh, adhered onto our chipboard already, this is gonna be our belly band. So we are just going to add adhesive on our top and bottom leaving the left and right hand side uh, unadhered. And then this is going to adhere about an inch and a half from the right hand side. Like so. And then from our ephemera pack, we're gonna grab this season's greeting um, the, we already put one in here, so now I'm just going to um, adhere this down. Season's greeting side up. And it's just gonna go slightly underneath my belly band. About an inch from the top and a half an inch or so from the left. And then I'm gonna take this fun chipboard piece. I'm leaving the frame intact with our top hat Santa. But of course, if you wanna make it more personalized, you could always pop out that Santa and put in a photo um, behind there. So it'd be a nice little framed photo. So if you wanna do that and you're not sure uh, what photos you wanna do, you just wanna adhere in a U shape so then you could slide in um, a photo into that frame. 
but I'm going to adhere mine all down as one big piece. But don't do what I just did. <laughs> um, because we are adhering this onto that belly band. I got ahead of myself. Uh, we only want the adhesive to be uh, just right down that center. So, making sure that this is no longer sticky on the sides. Now I can reapply my adhesive just in the center and so when I adhere it onto my belly band it I can still slide things underneath like so. And I just have it weighted a little bit towards the top, not quite center. And then we're going to take this cute little Santa chipboard square and this will adhere a little bit off the page. So I want it to be, I would say, about a fourth of an inch off the page. Like so. I'm just making sure I get any adhesive from the back. All right. So that chipboard is exposed, which when your your book's all full, you won't notice. But if uh, you happen to be a, uh, a perfectionist, you could always use a black Sharpie marker and color this black, or um, you could mat it with a decorative paper on the back too. Uh, we'll be doing those little tabs. Let me show you on each of the pages. It'll have a little chipboard that hangs off just a bit. So if you want to do that, you might want to decide now. But as you see, when it's all put together, you can you know barely even notice that exposed uh, chipboard back. And then I'm going to take this Tis the Season arrow sticker, and that's just going to go up right here, pointing to my Santa chipboard. And my last step for page one is taking our little Santa cut apart and sliding that into our belly band. Step 29, we're going to work on page two or the back of page one. And we are going to adhere our checkerboard paper. It'll be flush with the left top and bottom. And then with our red text paper that we did our half circle notches in, we are just going to add um, adhesive on the top, bottom, and the back of the right hand side. So not the notch side. That way we're forming our pocket. And again, for pockets, uh, I do recommend a liquid adhesive so it can dry thoroughly and your uh, inserts and photos won't get stuck. And then this is just going to go flush with our checkered board, uh, checkerboard paper on the right hand side, top and bottom. So we should have about an inch and a half of checkered paper hanging out. And of course, if you want to conserve paper, uh, you could always trim down your checkerboard paper. So it's, I don't know, what do you think? Like two inches wide, or maybe you want to go two and a half inches wide just to be safe. And so that way you would uh, save some more because we'll be using some another checkered paper on another pocket page. So just if you, are looking to conserve so you can make more cards or gift card holders. That's a fun and easy way to do that. And then with our um, Seasons Greeting 4x6 ephemera card, we are going to adhere this having the journaling side up. And that's going to go on our red text uh, just about a quarter of an inch from the top 
and side. And then we're going to take this uh, four by three Zeppelin ephemera card and Tis the Season chipboard. I'm going to add some adhesive just on the bottom of my Tis the Season because that's going to go right in the center off, halfway off the top of our Zeppelin, like so. And then flipping it over, I've already added some foam adhesive. Uh, you could add foam adhesive over the whole um, the whole back of it, but I did it in a U shape. Uh, that way, just leaving my options open if I want to slide in a little Christmas memento or some photos or something fun in there. And it, since it's foam adhesive that we're using, um, does even allow for even extra space. So if you wanted to do some fun little tags or something, you could slide in all sorts of stuff in there. And this is gonna go in the center between our two notches, leaving about, oh, uh, I don't know, a quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch from the right, left hand side of our red text paper. So now you can see I can slide in all sorts of stuff, goodies into that pocket. But then we're taking these Tis the Season ephemeras, super cute little ephemera cards, and these are gonna just tuck into um, our page that we've created. But another fun thing that you could do with these is to uh, trim them out so they look like tags as well, which would be a fun little addition, but I'm gonna just slide one in at one notched area and one at the other, like so. And then taking our little Santa in a car, he's gonna go at the bottom, just right in the center. So there you have it, we are complete uh, we've completed the back side of page one or a page two. All right, so I've made things confusing. So we're just calling this page one. So this is the front side of page one and the back side of page one. So now we're gonna start on our page two. So sorry if I led you astray, but for step 30 on page two, we are going to adhere the green side up of our holly and the ivy. And of course it's gonna be flush with the right hand side, top and bottom. Hear those little bubbles, sounds of happiness. Next, we're gonna take this postcard with Santa and it says season's greeting on the A side. We're going to adhere this down and I want the journaling side up. And it's gonna go in the bottom uh, left-hand corner about a half an inch from the bottom inside. And then we're gonna take our already made uh, flap element that we've created and add adhesive onto the back of the chipboard. And if you wanna leave open an extra uh, space here for something to slide in, you definitely can. So I'm gonna just adhere this in a U shape. Just leaving that option open. And then this is going to adhere in the center about a half an inch from the top. And then we've got that fun little flip top element. And then adding some extra fun little embellishments, I'm gonna take this Santa chipboard and just make sure I want to pop out both my little tag doodads. And don't do what I did, which is put the adhesive on the wrong side of this. Some days there are more mishaps than others. Alrighty. So on the other side, 
And then this cute little Santa chipboard is just gonna go leaving about an eighth of an inch of the holly and the ivy showing from our flip top page. And about an inch and a half from the top, we'll adhere that down. And then taking our Santa stamp, this little cutie is gonna go down towards the bottom right hand corner. And there you have it, the front of page two. Step 31, we are gonna work on the back of page two. And we're gonna take this already made uh, ornament gear page that we've created our little bottom pocket. And this is going to adhere flush with the left hand top and bottom. I got, you gotta love these steampunk ornaments. So cute with those gears. Now I saw on Instagram already some fun ornaments popping up with this collection. I saw some cute little steampunk bird ornaments. Super cute. So if you are creating anything that you want to share with us, be sure to just pop it on um, onto social media and then uh, use that graphic 45 hashtag. So I'm going to slide this little postcard into our pocket and then taking another one of our um, smaller chipboard pieces. I believe it's four and a quarter by six and a quarter. We are going to mat our Christmas tree on here. And then once you've created your chipboard photo mat, that's just gonna slide right into your little steampunk pocket. Step 32, we're gonna work on the front of page three, which is just a mirror image of the back of page two. So keeping it nice and simple. This is flush with the top, bottom, and right. You know, when I saw this collection in the making, I was I was not 100% sold on it, but the more I've been working with it and the more I see projects, I'm just falling in love with it and just love how fun and unique it is and really brings home that whole workshop vibe with all the steampunk elements as well. Now it's time to stuff our pockets. So we're gonna take this, it's Christmas time, four by six or six by four, a journaling card and stuff it in there. And then with another one of our six and a quarter by four and a quarter or other way around um, we are going to mat the magic of Christmas onto this photo mat and this heavy-duty photo mat is just gonna slip into that pocket and then we're taking this jingle all the way chipboard and add adhesive onto just um, the back the back of <laughs> left hand side or the right hand of the back side and this is going to adhere about halfway onto oh nope hold that it's nice that we are using liquid adhesive because I almost forgot our cute little borders so just wipe that off okay now we're back at it so we're gonna take our red, it's Christmas time borders, and these are going to adhere at the top of our pockets. That looks much better. Okay, let's adhere those. All right, now we've got our Christmas time border, and just make sure that when you're adhering it down, since it was one strip, that you do it um, in the right order. That way it'll just look a little bit neater. Now we can take this chipboard and adhere it halfway down to our front of page three. All right, so I flipped over my page and I saw that my score tape is kind of starting to pull away from that and I can kind of see it, which I don't like. So I, um, cause I just score taped two of these and I really liked how it took, but I don't necessarily love that you can kind of see it and it looks like it's pulling up. So I, um, 
I'm trying this out where I've taken a piece of black cardstock and I've uh, it's a uh, half an inch by nine inches and then I scored it in half and I'm just going to adhere it down on both the spine and my page. Part of the reason why it's doing that is that um, my geared page on the other side was slightly larger than it needed to be. So it, the page is not wanting to lay flat. You can see kind of how it's pulling up. So just make sure that when you are cutting your pages that they are the right size. Anyway, so I'm just creating another little scored mechanism here. I'm just using my bone folder. I'm just kind of making sure it's getting a really good coverage in the crease as well as on my page. And you do want to make sure that it's all movable uh, once you have it in. So if it's starting to pull up, just kind of use your bone folder to crease it in there while your page is laying down flat and that it can open up both ways. So now that I have fixed um, that issue, we can start on the back of page three. So step 33, we are going to repeat our um, step 29, which is this page. So we're going to use that same template to create this beautiful page. So just keeping this checkered board paper flush with the left top and bottom. Then we're gonna take that red text page with our half circles punched on the side and we're creating a pocket with this. So making sure that we don't put adhesive on the side that has our little half circle punches. And then this goes flush with our checkerboard and top and bottom. And then we're going to adhere our four by six Santa journaling side up on our red text page. Just weighted towards the bottom. And then taking the season's greetings, I've added some foam adhesive on the back. Of course, you can do it like I did last time and do a fun little pocket arrangement. But I thought this time I'd just try to keep it simple. And we're gonna pop up this over the postcard words, leaving about three quarters of an inch from the top. Our two tis the season ephemeras are gonna slide right in there. And then we'll adhere this cute little Santa right here. Step 34, our front of page four. We are going to be copying uh, step 30, where we have our fun little uh, flap page. So flush with the top, bottom, and right. So we'll be uh, mimicking this page. We're gonna take this uh, season's greetings ephemera. I love how Maria's really maximized these ephemera cards, making our cutting super simple for uh, decorating this album. And as well as um, creating a lot of fun little pullouts and photo mats. Gotta love the simplicity of, of it all. And then taking our last uh, little flip top element that we've created. I am going to adhere this in a U shape, leaving uh, the left hand side open. And then this is gonna be about a half an inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from the right hand side. And then we'll use this cute little deer 
making sure that we um, adhere both the tab of the deer and uh, the chipboard down, but leave part of it unadhered. So when this hangs off about a quarter of an inch or so, it makes a perfect little tab, just like so. And then last but not least, we're gonna take a little sticker. And this is just gonna go up in this negative space here. Nice and easy. Step 35 on the back of page four, we are gonna be repeating our step 28 where we created our belly band page. Our first page. You know what I love about repeating pages is not only is it easy and uh, make the prepping and getting everything ready easier, um, I also love that it gives it a nice cohesive look. So you can see the front and the back page are going to look the same as well as the inside covers. Um, so it just kind of gives it that nice complete look. Seems extra, extra polished to me. So now we're gonna add our adhesive onto the back of our belly band. About two inches from the left hand side. And then using the super cute little train chipboard. This is a frame piece, so of course, if you wanted to use that as section to uh, add your own personalized photo, you can always pop that out and do so. You would just want to only put adhesive on the center of the frame bits um, here and here. However, I'm gonna be using the whole thing, so I'm putting adhesive in my center, and this is gonna go on that belly band. Just weight it a little bit towards the top, like so. And then taking one of these uh, three by four season's greeting ephemera cards. This is gonna provide a great space for uh, adding some journaling or sentiments. That's gonna go right over here, about a fourth of an inch from this side. And then taking the Tis the Season Arrow sticker. This is just gonna go from the top pointing down, so cute. And then we've got our cut apart, the Peace, Love, Joy. That's just gonna slide right into that belly band. Now for step 36, we're gonna repeat our front cover for our back cover. So taking the Christmas time pocket paper page we've already created. We're gonna create another one of our chipboard photo mats. What's also really nice about these ephemera cards is the back side has that nice, simple side to it where there's a lot of room for journaling, but it also is a little less busy than the other side. So when you do tuck it in here, it does go in very nicely and not keep it, not making things too busy. And then we're gonna tuck this Santa in our pocket as well. And then adding our green border. That's gonna go on our pocket. Just flush to the top of our pocket. Like so. Using more of those banner stickers. Now I like to stick stickers on my hands while I'm getting ready to use them. That way they don't stick to the surface or anything else or accidentally get stuck to uh, other papers I'm working on. So I don't know, what do you do? I know some people put them on rulers. 
lots of different tricks out there. I know some of our brand ambassadors also uh, cover them the backside with a little bit of uh, baby powder or other flowers or other fine things like that. So it takes away the stick and then they can just use them like other uh, die cut embellishments. So I don't know, how do you do it? And then the Christmas time chipboard is just gonna go right down in the center of our pocket, like so. And we have completed the inside of our album. So we've got a lot of dimension going on in there, a lot of extra fun spaces uh, to really personalize and customize the insides. Step 37, we are gonna be decorating our cover. So we've already created this uh, chipboard mat and that's gonna go right on our front cover, adding some nice uh, dimension and some strength to our cover. And we're just gonna center that from top, bottom, and left and right. It's already looking so good just by adding that extra piece. Alrighty, so now we have cut out some, we fussy cut out these pieces earlier, and now we're just going to create a scene with those. So using this Christmas time, it's gonna be the first thing that goes down on our papers. And it does go off just a little bit from the top of our um, steampunk ornament paper. So I'm not gonna take my adhesive all the way to the top there or all the way to the sides because those will go off a little bit of where those holly leaves are also. And just having that go off the top just a bit and the leaves and berries, it's nice and centered, weighted at the top. Next, we are going to adhere our Steampunk Santa. And this is just going to adhere flat down onto our cover. And since this is gonna be getting lots of love every year when you pull it out, I do wanna make sure that we're getting all those little fussy cut pieces, getting those adhered so they won't pull up. And his Christmas tree is just gonna go right in between the top of the T and the bottom of the T. Like so. And then our train element, we are going to add some foam adhesive. I'm using these uh, scrapbook adhesives in black, which we love. And these are on our website as well, g45papers.com, under that staples tab, and then go to adhesives. There's some white ones on there as well, too, and some other stuff that'll go great with all your paper crafting. Now that I've got the backing off there, I can adhere this down. And I want my train to just go right underneath the M in time. Those toys and drums overlapping onto Santa, kind of giving his bag an overall nice feel. Now we're going to adhere some uh, chipboard elements down. So I'm gonna take this cute little reindeer arrow element and it's gonna go right towards the bottom, about a quarter of an inch from the uh, bottom of the black chipboard. And then this love and peace. I'm gonna pop out these little holes. Like so. Um, I'm gonna keep my chipboard all intact like I have been, but of course that is a great opportunity for you to label your album. Uh, maybe it's Christmas 2020 or whatever your photos are. 
uh, maybe it's a present and then you could write um, something sweet there and that's gonna go just right on top of our chipboard and our um, popped up ball and then we're going to use those steampunk clock keys and add a little bit of fun onto our cover so i'm going to be taking uh, this one and using it and then just using some nice heavy duty metal adhesive you could use uh, e6000 works great uh, ranger also uh, their glossy accents works i'm using some jewelry glue here and this is going to need to adhere right underneath the e in time perfect so there you have it our album is now complete we can take our little ribbon ends and tie this shut like so and then trim off our tails just a little bit i like to trim mine in a diagonal but you do you so we've got it all trimmed up and looking beautiful of course if you want to take it um, to the next level um, you can see Maria has added a little bit of red glitter to her Christmas time title as well as in a few different places inside as well so if you want if you have some glitter you could always add some extra sparkle so you can never have enough sparkle at Christmas time to your album uh, just with those fun little elements you can always do it uh, using a liquid adhesive and some dry uh, glitter or um, you can take something like a bottled glitter glue and glue it on i'm just going to do my title just to give you a little sample but this is one of those kinds of things that's it's kind of like coloring where i feel like it relieves it's a stress reliever But just going slowly and being patient is always optimal with using a fine glue like this. you had as much fun creating this darling DIY Christmas album as we did and we hope that you share your projects with us on Instagram using that graphic 45 hashtag you can also share your projects on our graphic 45 official uh, community page on Facebook but if you're looking for more tutorials like this one be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and then hit that notification bell so you know every time we upload a new tutorial we do a uh, full tutorials like this one uh, for our club g45 and uh, g45 card club every month and then our brand ambassadors also uh, do some really fun uh, videos for us that we post on there as well we thank you so much for joining us and as always we hope you stay safe and have fun paper crafting.